Hello, welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. I'm Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us. A lot to cover, so let's pray to start. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for rain uh, to fall even during the summertime, Lord. And thank you for re replenishing the reservoirs and the lakes of Israel and the rivers. Thank you, Father. Just pray that you'd let us see the events of our world through your eyes and and recognize how you're restoring Israel as a miracle resurrection of your purpose in these last days. Thank you, Father God. In the name of your Son, Yeshua ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad to have you with us. I always like to take you to my blog. Um, I did two blogs this week. You can find my blog at ElishaVision.com. That's E-L-I-S-H-A Vision.com. Elisha Vision. I uh, did two of them. One of them was Trump supports settlement sovereignty. There's indications that the peace plan he's working on is actually going to uh, recognize or allow Israel to, uh, to extend their sovereignty into the Judean Samaria areas that are called West Bank by the world, but in the Bible it's Judea and Samaria. And uh, some 400 or 500,000 Israelis live in cities and villages throughout the area and and uh, evidently, the Trump plan is going to allow them to be recognized as, uh, as part of Israel and under the sovereignty of Israel. And then on the same blog, there's a little video. I, I can't show it to you right now, but um, it's, it's from uh, Christian Friends of Israeli Communities. Um, and it's a wonderful thank you from Judea and Samaria, the West Bank. Uh, thanking Christians for standing with Israel. And I really encourage you to go to the blog and, and watch that little video. Then the other blog I did this week um, was called Abortion Constitutional Right. That's based on a tweet this week by Bernie Sanders who's, who claims that abortion is a, is a constitutional right. <laughs> and that's, that is totally upside down bizarro world as I called it. Uh, did you ever hear the right to life movement? Well that comes from the Declaration of Independence. It says that uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, the first one is life. That is one of the, th that's guaranteed by the Constitution, not killing your baby in the mother's womb. That is not guaranteed by the Constitution, uh, no matter how loudly Bernie Sanders claims that it is. And uh, so I encourage you to read that. I made, made four points about that. And then, then a scripture uh, from Psalm 83, because the, the point I made at the end is that the people who are uh, taking anti-biblical positions that hate Israel, that hate life and so forth, that are really it's a death cult abortion. Over 60 million babies have been killed in America since 1973. That's one third of our posterity. And, uh, but Psalm 83, in talking about a, a war against Israel from their neighbors, says that it actually reveals that the real motive is that they hate God. They hate the God of Israel. They hate the Creator God. And that's, uh, that's who they're trying to get to. And they can't get to Him, so they attack His people. And uh, Satan's always been trying to kill the babies. We know that. So uh, check it out on ElishaVision.com. All right, let's get on into the news a little bit here. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, gave a video this week uh, in in the context of Israel's celebration of Israel's Independence Day, May 15th. And, uh, and again, he did a video. I recommend you to look at the video, but I'll just uh, read a little bit from it. Um, Barry uh, Siegel gave it on his uh, Jerusalem uh, News uh, Vision for Israel. He said, Israel is a superpower of hope. That's what Netanyahu said in his speech. But the scripture that Barry put in was, I, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says Jehovah. And then Netanyahu says that Israel is the superpower of hope. He says, we're the only people who live in the same land with the same name, speak the same language, and have the same faith as we did 3,000 years ago. And he said that um, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the celebration of our 71st first Independence Day. From the day Israel was born until today, we have faced enemies. Yet despite the severe security threats, we've built a living democracy with an independent judiciary, a free press, and 
religious freedom for all. This is a modern miracle. Uh, and, he, and, he, and he ends up, I wish I could read the whole thing, but he ends it up uh, by saying, uh, we continue to dream of peace with all our neighbors because I believe we're not doomed to live together. We are destined to live together. Together we can build a better future for all the peoples of the, re of the region. And uh, his main uh, point that I thought was so good is uh, Israel is a small country, but we have big dreams. We're already becoming a world superpower, not a superpower of military might, though we will always do what is necessary to defend ourselves, but a superpower of hope, hope for a better future for all humanity. And Israeli technologies are already improving the lives of people around the world in the fields of clean water, sustainable farming, green energy, and medical aid. Just a wonderful speech, a short speech, a few minutes, three or four minutes, you can find it. Uh, uh, just Google uh, uh, Netanyahu uh, Independence Day speech and you can find it. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamophobia trap. The one thing Muslims are always accusing other people of is Islamophobia. Uh, and, and the reason this is relevant today is that President Trump is actually uh, considering uh, declaring the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization, which it is. Uh, they're terrorists who wear suits and ties, actually. But uh, this is their statement. This is their, their basic uh, uh, vision statement. Allah is our objective. The Prophet is our leader. The Quran is our law. Jihad is our way. Dying in the way of Allah is our highest hope. Isn't that interesting? Because Christians believe that living for Jesus is our highest hope and living for everlasting life. But actually, Islam uh, believes that death is the way uh, of their salvation. It's, it's just tragic. Um, great little video here uh, that I'm going to show you. Terrorists target civilians, but Israel targets terrorists. I'm going to see if you see if this will work. I still trying to get uh, a video to work on my blog here, so let's try this one. <laughs> Pretty strong, isn't it? Israel targets terrorists. Terrorists target civilians. Can't be much clearer than that. You need to really pray protection for Israel and salvation for the enemy. I'm not wanting them to be uh, destroyed. I want to see them get saved. Well, here's a, an article in uh, Israel National News. Well, Hamas new weapon beat Israel's Iron Dome. Hamas is working with drones, trying to outfit him with anti-tank missiles. And uh, it's a serious challenge Israel's going to have to face. It's something else to be praying about. Uh, meanwhile, this week, Syria claims Israel attacked targets near Damascus, two different uh, attacks. Uh, Israel uh, normally doesn't uh, admit it when they do that. One time recently they did, but uh, that hasn't been reported whether or not they did for sure, but uh, probably did because they continue to attack the uh, terrorist uh, uh, arms st uh, storage places and so forth especially the Iranian ones in Syria, because they're not supposed to be there. Deb Kafal has a story also today about huge explosions reported near the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad's green zone in Iraq. Uh, that's just today. In fact, just a few hours ago, a couple hours ago, I first noticed that. Uh, so that's just happening. I'm not sure what's going to go on with that. Uh, and Israeli TV claims that Iran is weighing, considering attack on Saudi oil production facilities. Uh, they actually have already attacked uh, uh, Saudi pipeline, a couple explosions in a pipeline, and of course the, you heard about the two Saudi tankers that were attacked. No major damage, but uh, it's concerning, that's for sure. So Darbon's uh, cartoon says two questions. Question one, are the crazed Iranian ayatollahs and their regional proxies ready for all-out all war? Question number two, are we? Uh, so that's an interesting question. Uh, my own opinion is that uh, we're not going to see that Iran war. I don't think that Iran and the U.S. are going to have a war. Uh, there may be some 
uh, battles, but I don't think a real war. Uh, pray that that's the case. Uh, the EU res rescues the Palestinian pay for slave program. Uh, the EU is giving 15, uh, what is it, billion? Let me check here. 15 million euros to cover salaries in the Palestinian Authority uh, because they're spending the money for their salaries to support salaries for terrorists in Israeli prisons. And that's called pay for slave. That's where the name comes from. Here you have, you have this famous picture of uh, a boss who who definitely made this statement. We salute every drop of blood spilled for the sake of Jerusalem. Uh, they have this fantasy that they're going to get Jerusalem back, and uh, the Bible is pretty clear that they won't. Here's another good story. 700 reasons not to create a Palestinian state. Of course, that's referring to a couple weeks ago when 700 rockets were fired from Gaza into Israel. And uh, the idea that if you, if you give the Palestinians another state, then they'll have peace has already been disproven several times, most recently in Gaza, where uh, Israel withdrew uh, 10,000 people and all their troops. And all, no, there are no Jews in, Israel, in uh, Gaza at all. And yet, two weeks ago, 700 rockets were fired. So that's a, that's a non-starter. Israel cannot give up Gaza and the West Bank. I think they need to move back into Gaza, basically, and establish law and order again. This is a little bit humorous to me. The Gaza border protest this week was canceled due to heat, Ramadan, and Eurovision. <laughs> I thought the funny part was that because of heat. Uh, and uh, So but praise the Lord it was canceled anyway because they've, they've been doing it every weekend for a year. And uh, pray, praise God that it stopped, uh, at least this weekend. Uh, Germany denounces the BDS, Boycott, Diversity, and, and Sanction Movement, Anti-Israel uh, Movement as anti-Semitic and uh, said it's re reminiscent of the Nazi era boycotts. That was how Nazism started in Germany. They started by boycotting and, and sanctioning it, Jews and so forth. And, uh, and so Germany actually voted against it and, and, uh, and condemned it. And, uh, and that was, that's good news in my opinion. And uh, of course, uh, or the good news is also that Netanyahu praised Germany for making that uh, position. And, of course, as you would expect, the Palestinian Authority is upset that Germany said that because they think BDS is a wonderful thing. Uh, here's just a question. Will we get a government or another election? Talking about Israel, um, Netanyahu had a two-week extension to form the government. The government's not formed yet. only has about 10 days to go. And uh, we need to pray that he can work out things with the coalition and establish a government. The, the downside, if he doesn't, is that there'd have to be another election. And uh, I'm, I'm praying that he'll be able to pull it together here and, and the parties that are arguing with each other. What they're doing is kind of blackmailing him and each other to get different portfolios in the government. So uh, just that, that's just politics, and I'm praying that that'll be taken care of. Um, Australia, big news in Australia, the ruling conservative coalition was re-elected to a third term. All the polls had the liberals winning in a, uh, a big way. And, uh, and I think you have to have 76 in order to form a government in, in Australia. And that's exactly what they had. This time they've got at least 77. It could go up to 78 or 9. And, uh, so, and, the, and Prime Minister Scott Morrison of Australia is a, is a believer, a Christian believer. He called the victory a miracle victory because all the polls said he was going to lose. So uh, I tend to agree with him. Israel today, today's reporting on a popular children's program uh, around the world that's made in America called Arthur. You might, I don't know if you're familiar with this, I've never watched it, but <laughs> it, evidently it's a popular kids' uh, cartoon program in America. But the newest episode uh, of this series now has Arthur, has um, the, uh, the, one of the people in the show in the cartoon, Mr. Ratburn, got married to a man. So we have a homosexual marriage in a children's TV show in America, and it's also shown in Israel. Um, Bernie Sanders said he would move the U.S. Embassy in Israel out of Jerusalem in order to get a peace deal. And uh, that's not going to happen, but it does reveal where he's coming from. Uh, here's an interesting headline. How Rashida Tlaib is beating AIPAC and turning the future of the Congress against Israel. Uh, every summer, AIPAC, the American-Israel uh, Political Action Committee, uh, takes a trip of, uh, and take, invites Congress people to go and have a, a short trip to Israel 
just to see the land, see what's happening there. Well, so she's got a competing one overlapping the same dates uh, and where she's going to be touring the Palestinian territory uh, in, in a total propaganda tour against Israel. So uh, she's a serious uh, enemy of Israel, and we need to recognize that and pray that, that uh, her lies and propaganda will be exposed, as one recently was when she claimed that the Palestinians helped uh, receive the Jews into their land after the Holocaust, which was an absolute lie from the pit of hell because they actually participated with Hitler and they tried to kill the Jews who came to the Holy Land. So she was lying about that. Here's something serious. Facebook bans black conservative activist Candace Owens. Uh, she is a great voice for the conservative movement and millennials. She's a young lady and uh, we need to pray for her and, and uh, and something is really happening with these media companies. Uh, the next report here on Breitbart, WordPress.com blacklists blogs critical of Islam. Uh, two of them on WordPress.com. The one blog called Creeping Sharia. Uh, and uh, let's see, I don't see the name of the other one. Uh, but anyway, two of, them, uh, two of them were taken offline by WordPress. And my blog is hosted by WordPress. Uh, and so uh, that's getting pretty serious. If, if for some reason I get uh, blocked on my blog, uh, please uh, let me know uh, and, and, uh, and email me. I, I try to send out an email notice. If I have your email, I send out a notice. So email me uh, if, if you uh, lose the blog for some reason. I'd like to know. Um, this is from the Jerusalem Post. Um, oh, yeah, this is great. Um, get the headline here. <laughs> U.S. ambassador, or Israeli ambassador, excuse me, uh, Bible speech at the U.N. goes viral. A video of Ambassador Danny Danone holding the Bible and asserting the Jewish people's right to Israel has been translated into multiple languages, including Turkish. And there's a picture of him in the video where he's holding up a Bible, and, and his point is simple, that, that Israel has continuously inhabited the land. There have always been Jews living in Israel. For over 3,000 years and the Bible clearly states that God gave the land to Israel and that's the number one birthright claim for Israel and their right to exist and their right to have the land and uh, another one from uh, Jerusalem Post uh, this kind of neat the uh, Ben Gurion Airport is set for an 840 million dollar expansion there's a view of the welcome hall when you come into the airport um, when you travel on a tour there so that's some good news Got some good news here to finish with. Want to live in Israel? There's a new visa you should check out. They have a new B-5 visa for Israel that if you're an investor in Israel, uh, you can actually live there as long as your company's there and you're running the company and operating it and so forth. Uh, worth, worth checking out. Uh, good news here from Christians United for Israel. Now 6 million members of Kufi. Doreen and I are going to be there, Lord willing, in July after we get home from our Israel tour in June. Uh, and then a great little video here on, uh, on the uh, Watchman, hosted by Eric Stockelbeck, a Kufi thing, but it's on TBN. If you get TBN, look it up. It'll be on all week, I'm sure, and replayed. About the Dead Sea. Uh, I wish I had time to show it to you a little bit more. Uh, but they're actually seeing evidences of, of fresh water in little ponds around the edge of the sea, but also bubbling up an, from springs inside the sea. From underneath, the, you know, the sea coming up in the in the Dead Sea. And it shows pictures of that. And, uh, in fact, I don't know if it was there. It might have been showing you while I was going by it. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, those those uh, underwater... Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean, to, didn't mean to play it. There, see, those underwater columns are formed by fresh water coming up uh, into the Dead Sea. And the Bible says that at the end, the Dead Sea is going to live again, and there'll be fish. People will be fishing. They'll be... Uh, drying their nets on the shores, uh, and it's already beginning to happen. Hallelujah. And uh, finally, uh, Watergen, an Israeli company, provides 120 orphans in Uzbekistan with fresh water made from air. You have to look at that picture. She's getting water out of a big machine, but it extracts water from the air when they don't have water uh, available. What a miracle. And God is using Israel to bless the world. Well, hallelujah. Let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the good news as well as all the, the fact that even in the bad news, you're in control. We just pray for the peace of Jerusalem and rain and 
Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. You are the faithful God, Jehovah. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom, shalom.